I decided to participate in the Ludwig Game Jam. True to my usual style, I jumped in at the last minute and only had about two days to make this. Let me show you how I did it. The theme was Foddian games, games in the spirit of Bennett Foddy, like Getting Over It or Quap. At first, I set out to make a game called Legless, about a blonde-haired elf <laughs> who loses his legs and must crawl around using only his arms. This was obviously a play on one of the characters' names in Lord of the Rings, and I thought the awkward controls would match the Foddian spirit pretty well. <laughs> Getting the physics dialed in was pretty comical. <laughs> <laughs> but I ran into a couple issues that made me ultimately abandon the idea. It seemed there was no exposed way to drive the ragdoll joints using motors like you could with rigid bodies in Godot. Also, making light of the concept of losing limbs might be a little bit insensitive. Then Askey Rajaro got me thinking with this comment. I think that's already been done, Askey Rajaro. Although, you could have a fish out of water style game where you're using the physics of flapping the tail and you try to, like, launch yourself around. So the next day, I scrapped everything and started linking rigid bodies together with hinges for a fish flopping simulator. I only needed to set up two inputs, flop left and flop right. I wanted the fish to be locked on the z-axis and only rotate on the z-axis, which meant I should have locked every axis except z for the rotation. Obvious in hindsight. Then I ran into my first real snag. No matter how fast I made the motors, the fish did not have enough force to fling itself around. So I tried switching from the bullet physics engine to the Godot physics engine. That, that works great. It worked a little better when I made the motor values less extreme, but a new problem arose. The rigid bodies would sometimes freeze and stop moving entirely. Fortunately, I noticed a trend that this happened after the bodies were still for a bit, so I suspected they might be going to sleep. And there was a magic checkbox to fix this behavior. Technical issues aside, there was a major design problem. You could flop straight up, and that was about it. How would players control where they go? Also, the motor physics weren't respecting the angle constraints at high speed, so I decided to increase the physics frame rate to 240 FPS to improve behavior. Then I bumped up the motor speed for higher flops. I added more segments in hopes for better control. That's basically what a fish looks like, right? <laughs> this did allow for much cooler flips, so you could at least fail to make progress in style. Oh, nice. The camera needed to follow the fish, which was actually a bunch of individual parts, so I just moved it relative to the average of the fish body positions. This worked well enough after moving the camera up and angling it down a bit. I also tried the bullet physics engine again to see if it worked better with the new settings, but it still didn't allow enough force to move much, and neither physics engine gave much control for intentional movement, so I thought I should try adding some forward force when the tail flops back and forth. I measured the change in angle between tail segments and scaled that by some arbitrary factor to use as an impulse to drive the body forward. Whoa. All right, maybe that, that factor is a little bit high. After tweaking some physics values and dialing in the tail factor, it actually seemed to work pretty well. Though even small ramps and obstacles proved to be quite a challenge. But they were surmountable challenges. The level design was definitely going to be interesting, as the fish behavior was often unexpected. I couldn't feasibly build vertically like most Fadian games, but it was surprisingly easy to lose progress on a horizontal level, so I felt it still fit the theme well. Of course, I did attempt to build some vertical obstacles, but ended up having just one at the very end as an extreme challenge, as I didn't have much time to build a larger level. I decided to model the fish in separate overlapping mesh segments, as this seemed like the quickest approach. I couldn't resist making it look like a herring, so I could make a joke about it later. The mesh segments were attached as children to the rigid bodies. The physics shapes needed to be tweaked to better match the mesh. The fish was still a bit of a blockhead, so I finished modeling it and tweaked the camera angle a bit so you could see more than just the very bottom of the fish. Then it was time to make some sound, so I moistened my hand and slapped it with my trusty flarp noise putty. Oh man, it fell on the floor. I also recorded some wet slaps. And finally some nice juicy mouth noises which I mixed together for maximum moist impacts. To hook the sound up, I set the rigid body to report one collision, turned on the contact monitor, and connected the body entrance signal to the script so it knows when there's an impact. Every physics update, I saved a copy of the velocity so it was possible to determine how hard the fish hit by comparing the velocity before and after. To start off with, I simply played the audio stream if the velocity change was greater than some arbitrary threshold of one meter per second. I also tried playing the same sound at a higher pitch for the tail impacts, but that didn't sound very good, so I decided to record a different set of sounds specifically for the tail. Randomly swapping between eight different tail-specific impact sounds brought the audio quality up to my standards. Funnily enough, this wasn't the first time I'd recorded fish flopping sounds. I tried to make hello sounds for my subscribers, and the sound for a uh, stockfish was randomly triggered. Hey, uh, you oh my gosh. Uh, stop this, or you're just gonna leave them flopping around on the ground there. <laughs> that was perfect. I thought stockfish actually came in here. 
<laughs> that was a neat trick. I wanted something the players could bounce on, so I created these bumpers that are often seen on boats and docks. For some reason, I kept wanting to call them buoys, which sparked the idea to have a buoy in the water at the end so I could have an oh buoy voice line when you end. So I modeled a buoy and slapped a collision polygon on it. I really wanted to make a splash in this game jam, so I filled up my bathtub to record more sounds. This is now a hot tub stream. Rubber ducky, you're the one. You make bath time life so fun. Rubber ducky, I'm awfully fond of you. Boop, 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 be doo. I dragged my microphone into the bathroom and chucked the sad remnants of my overused flarp into the tub repeatedly. I may still have the maturity of an eight-year-old. What just happened? Turns out trying to reset the rigid bodies of the fish from a button press doesn't work properly. Fortunately, just using a call deferred fixed the problem. It was a much bigger headache on Goop Loop. Now it's time to make things look nicer with some custom fonts and whatnot. Needs to be bigger. Hmm, <laughs> maybe to you. My heart got a solid workout when I mistyped a directory name, deleted the empty directory, and Godot attempted and failed to re-import all of my assets as though they were in that directory. No, what, 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 no, what, what are you doing? What? Fortunately, nothing was lost, and that was a nice reminder to check my changes into source control. That was scary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Read my mind, it's like, holy crap, I deleted a directory with nothing in it, and it was like, Whoops. For my next trick, I created ocean waves out of sine waves. Big waves. Unfortunately, this vertex shader did not adjust the normals, but thanks to the math wizardry of Bot524, I was able to get this. With the waves present, the static buoy looked out of place, so I animated it directly in Godot. Cubic interpolation works great for quick and dirty animations like this, and I later discovered that I should skip the last keyframe with a looping animation to avoid the hitch. While I wanted to create all of the assets from scratch myself, I didn't really have the means to record ambient ocean sound, so I had to resort to grabbing some sounds by Ralph Whitehead and David GTR1 on freesound.org. I did layer them together and create a clean loop myself, though. I decided to throw in a quick subtitle system as I had figured out a clever way to do it while working on Goop Loop. In short, I exploit Godot's localization system and use the audio file name to both load the file to play and as a key for the translation system. Then I just set the subtitle label's text to the translated audio file name. Using Regions and Reaper allows me to export segments of the project with their own names so I can have consistent settings and filters for all of my voice lines. Oh boy, you did it! Oh boy! You did it! Oh no! I forgot that Ogvorbus files import with looping enabled by default. Fortunately, the default import behavior can be changed. Just to be safe, I decided to upload a build on Itch.io and I got some interesting name suggestions. Flop! Oh my gosh, that's actually a really good one. The build worked, and of course it just wouldn't be one of my streams without somebody redeeming some AI generated text. The music stomped on her ears, her insides shook, and a high pitched sound escaped her lips. She felt lightheaded, her feet tapped on the carpeted floor in manic fits of nervousness. She could not control her head like a fool charging a mighty horse. She was scared and hungry. This was her first gig. She wanted to prove herself. She wanted to conquer the world in the quest for the coveted Queen of Rock. No woman had accomplished this yet. She had heard tales of amazing shows in the legendary Utopia Bar, a 24-hour dance club owned by the notorious and mysterious Dr. Lily. The notion gave her courage. The air in her lungs pulsed. Her soul cried out for a rush of victory and triumph. He stuck his tongue out at her and waved a fake hand at her, pretending to shoo her away. She gritted her teeth. Gritting her teeth. <laughs> her hands began to tremble. Flop 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 Who lives in a coral reef under the sea? Dragons, mermaids, and crocodiles. I once made the biggest mistake in my life. Well, I thought it was a mistake, but it turned out to be the best thing that ever happened to me. I was married to an evil witch. She called herself an otaku. She had no chin, and the only eyelashes I ever saw were on the ends of her eyebrows. She was strange. Once, she even let her cat, Toga, inside my house, and the cat ate my shrimp plant. Okay, back to development. I wanted some piano music in the background while the voice lines play to really nail that Bennett Foddy vibe. Here, I'm experimenting with some chords because I don't really know music theory and I just mash keys until something sounds good. 
And while this sounded passable, something was a bit off. I couldn't quite figure out what it was, though. There wasn't much time left, so I just had to roll with it. Later on, I realized that I should have been going for something more waltz-like, with three beats per measure instead of four. That explains why it felt like there was this awkward pause. Now it was time to record some actual voiceover lines that would explain the game and its inspiration. You can use the arrow keys, A and D, or the mouse buttons to flip and flop. The music system handled fading properly, but I was getting some strange hitches in the audio. I think it was due to checking if the voiceover was playing every frame, so I switched to using a signal when the audio stream finished. I went to extend the music a little bit, and I should have left well enough alone, but I couldn't help fixing the timing, which meant I had to extend it even more since I cut a quarter of it out in addition to realigning all the notes. I think it was worth it in the end. Sounds decent enough. And speaking of sounds, it seems constantly changing out the sounds on the random pitch stream for the fish flops caused some occasional crashes. Uh oh What just happened? Instead of focusing on more important tasks, I decided to add more detail to the head. I don't want to set the world on fire. I created bones for the fins, gills, and mouth, parented the fish head mesh to the armature, and made a little gasping animation to really sell the fish out of water look. It looked a bit unnatural to play it constantly looping, so I set up a timer to play it at a random interval. I slapped on some vertex colors and I tried to use the materials exported from Blender, but they just didn't have that same glossy wet look as the ones configured in Godot, and I didn't have time to figure out why, so I just enabled vertex colors on my original material and reassigned it to everything. Then I put a brown material on everything wooden, and even with the roughness maxed out, there was some sort of sheen or Fresnel effect that made the shadowed edges of things as light as the ground, causing the visibility of obstacles to be very poor. Changing the diffuse mode fixed the problem, but I decided to give the dock a different material for better clarity anyway. I had to throw in some goo blue plugs, and then I finally started trying to make the level look like not a bunch of boxes. Less than one hour to go! Since I didn't have time to set up a lot of triggers like I did for Goop Loop, I threw together some generic voice lines and wrote a quick VO filler system that would randomly play a line if one hadn't played for a couple minutes. I did get a trigger or two in though. As a fish, you should be able to scale this. The thing that sucks is that I did all this hard work setting up a whole system for VO with queuing lines, subtitles, and music, but in the end there was only time to record like five lines. I had to export a build and get it up before the deadline. A notable amount of time was spent just finding the browser window in each tab. Where the heck is it? This one. There it is. In my rush to export and upload the files, I made a critical mistake that I didn't notice until I tested the game on the itch page. Oh shoot, 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 shoot! I forgot to move the fish back to the start of the level after doing some testing. I should have run it at least once before exporting. Now I had to re-export and re-upload everything with only a few minutes left on the clock. I wasn't sure if it was necessary to upload the build on GitHub as well, and I lost my composure a little bit trying to find where to upload files. I don't see sidebar anywhere. The literal sidebar. There's nothing on the side. It's blank. No, I have no idea what you're talking about. There's nothing on the left side. Oh, the right side. Ah. I decided to just submit it before the time ran out. Seemed the GitHub repository was only necessary to validate the build for malicious content. And boom, submitted with six minutes to spare. Then I just sat back and enjoyed my creation for a bit. <laughs> Aside from the fact that one of my triggers somehow got scaled up and triggered a line too early. Sure hope the end trigger works. Flop was almost selected to be played on Ludwig's stream, but it didn't quite make the cut into the top 10. Oh, no, oh, okay. <laughs> there were some really great entries though, I'll post a link in the video description. A big shout out to my patrons who helped support me in making content like this. There are so many games out there, and very few of them are actually widely known about. Statistically speaking, if I were to attempt to extend this game as a commercial product, it would likely flop. Do that whole like and subscribe thing if you want to see what I did in the post jam updates. <laughs> uh, the scramble was too early, Fool Ass! <laughs> Until next time, I'll see you later. Scramble!